I need to start paying attention to the times more. <laughs> Something happened, right? All I can say for this is that something's very wrong. Very seriously wrong. I need to step here and everything might fall apart. Can we go tell me what's wrong, please? At the very least, I need her to tell me what happened. I can't do a thing until I know what we're up against. Nico opens her mouth slightly, closes it, then repeats the process finally in a, in a whisper far removed from her normally forceful voice she speaks. A call, what, on a payphone? Destroy you with her cell phone immediately after beginning on her life on the run. Nico slowly nods her head and continues up. Audibly fighting the fact that she's in her father. <laughs> Around Yumiko and interrupting her words, crushing her against me in a powerful hug. I bent her, her hair and stroked the small, the small of my back. <laughs> Sorry, all, all I seem to do is make you worry. The girl was so desperately concerned about me that she nearly threw her own freedom away. I was naive to, th to think I understood, stupid to think she would. Just put it behind her for a moment. I'm immer immersed in something very much like despair. How all can the likes of me possibly answer such intense feelings? After gently stroking Nico's back one last time, I pull away, determined to at least try. Believe me, it's better to assume they already located us. As soon as you place that call, they had a transport record. There are many people who bother to use a payphone these days. It's going to raise suspicion. Yeah, I'm sure you had no idea. Can't do anything about it now. Put that out of your mind. All right, then. This isn't the time for me to cow all my failings or for him to regret her actions. I'm quickly gathering up a few basic personal belongings. I open the curtain. I crack and peer outside. It doesn't seem to be anything suspicious going on yet. Picking my cell phone from my pocket, I open a map from the area around our apartment. How far escape for us seems back full for a moment. We're going to catch a train at Sechi Station. Let's hurry. Yes. With a reassuring nod, I take her by the hand. This is I believe we're going to escape, pulling Yumiko along behind me. The situation is clearly worse than it was back then, but today Yumiko's grip seems a little firmer. As we run along the asphalt under the setting ceiling, I squeeze her hand in return, searching for the resolve I'll need to keep her safe. くそ。遅かったか。急に出て行った感じだな。荷物がまだほとんど残っている。よし、すぐに社長に連絡しろ。俺は手がかりになりそうなものがないかどうか確認する。分かった。はい。今現地に到着しました。申し訳ありません。確かにここにいたようですが、すでに逃げられた後でした。つい先ほどまでいた形跡が見られます。すぐに追います。分かった。すぐに追え。逃がすな。逃がさんぞ、ユ
this girl real good. I've been searching in vain for what feels like a very long time now. Two clumps of crap skillful white lies and we need to give her a temporary relief. She gave her things to no wood in the passage of time. It didn't seem to be another choice. Now it's wish for anything in time to be positive. Something like this didn't happen at the moment. That happened. I flew away for this for the infinite flow of time to solve all of our problems. It is to admit, you know, he was just tired of this lifestyle and took its toll on me and well, I trust it's such an idiotic policy and otherwise you gotta tell her something. There's something I wanted to want you to really know. I just came out and said it right now, there's no way she can say it at face value. I should probably interpret it as a kind, but insecure lip service might well end up pushing her even further into her shell. Dad cheering the girl up right now will probably have just the opposite effect. A loud thunk and squeal from the brakes, our train shakes heavily in <laughs> A board sounding kind of conductor informs us we've arrived at a station. The Ichigawa Mountain Line. As the name might suggest, leads up to the mountain themselves and heads even further into the backwoods than our current destination. As I glance out from our mostly empty carriage, a sign, uh, on, the sign on the station platform catches my eye. Halfway up, up the mountain, the West Sumo Railroad built a baseball stadium at, some, at something of a tourist attraction. The sign covered with a large poster advertisement for Team's upcoming schedule. Mm. But my gaze comes to a halt just below it. Underneath that flashy logo with the name of their baseball field spelled out in English, there's another sign I hadn't noticed at first. It brings back a memory from a few months ago, something we talked about before, then the strain began to wear us down. Something important that I very nearly forgot. Oh, that's right. We've been hard pressed just to get by. Maybe it's only natural that this slipped out of my mind. But it's something Yumiko needs, something she needed for a long time. Yumiko, you awake? Pulling Yumiko's head toward my shoulder, I lightly shake her head. This is gonna be a long ass session that I'm doing here. Time to transfer. Yeah, I gotta hurry. Hurry or the train's gonna leave. Step out onto the platform, then make our way toward the largely deserted branch line. The wind. Still a little cold, despite the season, blows vigorously through the exposed station. Forgot something, we're going to take care of that. No, that's not it. I glance back at Yumiko, just as before, her expression is full of profound fatigue and sorrow. Forcing my dull face into the most reassuring smile I can manage I speak. This way, Yumiko. Pulling her along by the hand, I stride toward the mountain line platform. The wind gusts against our back as if to push us along. <laughs> as you can guess, the conversation from a few parts ago. <laughs> What's up? The train took us three stops up into the mountain before reaching its final stop. Seeing as we disembark, Yumiko's expression transforms into one of pure bewilderment. With one step past the ticket gate, I see a vivid electric <laughs> decorations open up theoretically before our eyes. It's an amusement park if you hadn't figured that out for yourself. <laughs> It's the polar opposite of the colorless fatigue life we've been trapped trapped in for so long. Must feel like I've carried her into a dream. It will be stranger if she wasn't taken back. That's exactly it. Our pursuers will never suspect the two of us might be playing around here like we don't have a care in the world. <laughs> Bringing my mouth close to Yumiko's ear, speaking in an artificial stern tone of voice. 
the same game we go this is a crucial part of our escape strategy forget the question for now it needs you to act like you're having fun so, so... yeah it might well invite suspicion unless we're sincere's Seriously enjoying ourselves. Make it look convincing, alright? <laughs> and we go not to little baby as I slap her gently on the shoulder and shift to a louder, cheerful voice. Have a start a roller coaster, am I right? <laughs> powerful enemy, she says. I don't think the amusement park rides really have power levels. But apparently, Yuko worked out a firm internal ranking. It's all good if we start off with a real frill everything after a whole seems easier by comparison, right? No buts, come on, let's go. From <laughs> seeing Yumiko's hand, I drag her over to the World Curse of Heim by Force. And there were mostly empty amusement parks soon to be closed for the night. The sound of our rapid footsteps echo for the air. Maybe we should at least catch our breath first. Understandably enough, Yumiko had been hesitant at first, but after two or three rides that faded away completely, by now she's the one pulling me around. <laughs> me, I like to ride that bench in the rest of the area for a while. People have often told me my listening skills need work, but it seems I'm not the only one. <laughs> hey, don't yank me around like that. Smiling wearily, I let Yumiko pull me back into a run. Never been one before, but well, I imagine it won't be a problem. Not quite the same thing, but I've got experience driving up a to 300 kilometers per hour, but it's probably best to keep that thought to myself. No point reminding the girl of the past. In any case, handling this thing sort of vehicle is actually something of a specialty of mine. You wanna have a go? A little late for to worry about that now after the way you flipped out on the frill ride, ow. Yumiko pokes me sharply in the flank. <laughs> this is coming from the girl who crackled with glee as the world, as the coaster went into a nearly straight vertical drop. Well, whatever. Let's give it a shot. I'm looking forward to seeing how you seeing you drive. Seriously. This inspires a moment of relief, but soon I recall the distressing example of a certain monstrous speed demon named Solomon. <laughs> oh yeah, the freaking drive the truck. <laughs> Indeed, there's no telling how taking hold on the steering wheel will change a person. A vision of Yumiko merely smashing around the track, squeaking. <laughs> this feels so good. I want more Yuji flashes before my eyes. I think I'll have to keep a very clear, careful eye on how she needs to develop out here. Uh, it's nothing. I just reflect on the countless possibilities lying dormant inside the human soul. Well, yeah, since we went from one end to the, of the park to the other ride, literally everything we saw. Yumiko looks at me with a smirk on her face. So, Sumi, I'm just not a fan of that coffee cup thing. Spare me the particular applications, please. It's good that Yumiko seems to be enjoying herself, but the last thing I need is a, that girl developing some weird, <laughs> some weird little superiority complex. I think some retaliation may be in order. Yumiko, how about this next? 
seeing him go peers down at the pamphlet in my hands. Her face stiffens like water for his eyes. <laughs> What's wrong? Where's that energy enthusiasm gone all of a sudden, Sakaki and Yumiko? <laughs> Yumiko looks up at me with bleeding eyes, meeting her gaze with a deliberate kind of expression. I answer flatly and decisively. Not happening. It's your punishment for mocking me about the fat spinning ride. Only fair that we have you face up to your own weakness as well, right? I make my way to a building tucked into the dense forest on the edge of the amusement park. Forcefully pulling a resisting Yumiko along behind me. A building marked Spinning Chilling Hall of Horrors. <laughs> you know, the haunted house. Well, I wasn't expecting much for a mere amusement park attraction, but that was a truly engrossing experience. That was a figure that popped out. A wax figure popped out over halfway through, though, was particularly well made. The way his brain burst out all over the place was quite realistic, don't you think? Oh, in the monster of the hall, I saw the, the decapitation coming, but I wasn't expecting his severed bloody head to come off flying in our direction. Guess it's worth giving that sort of place a try every once in a while, hey, Yumiko? What's wrong? You haven't been saying much, and that pale face of yours is getting white, or did you catch a cold or something? You just seem more frightened than I expected. Yumiko always shrieked and screamed like a normal girl for the first five minutes or so that the terror must have overloaded her brain no matter what came after us she just quivered violently at my side her face frozen in an expressionless mask you really are totally helpless against that sort of stuff huh my bad can't deny that Mm, you say something? Her pallid face abruptly blooming red. Yumiko pulls me firmly along by the hand in a clear attempt at changing the subject. Yeah, same here. We finished visiting nearly all of the attractions the park has to offer. Yumiko glows with obvious satisfaction, but there's a hint of fatigue in her eyes as well. Of course, considering the long, stormy day we just had, I suppose it's only natural for her to be a little worn out. Why don't we finish up by riding the Ferris wheel or uh, Yumiko? I suggest we conclude our visiting with that fair, venerable amusement park stable. I notice that Yumiko is looking off in a completely different direction. Is there someone behind me? No. Is there someone behind me? No, it doesn't seem like it. she's being, being, shooting glances over at one fixed point in particular. So careful not to let Yumiko know as I follow the line of her gaze. Wait, does Yumiko serious want to I find this find there surprising me? It's an attraction somewhat out of sync with Yumiko's image. Of course, an amusement park isn't the sort of place you expect to find Yumiko to begin with, but even if in that context this ride stands out as an S-class mismatch. Hey, Yumiko. Do you don't want to ride that thing? Pointing in the direction Yumiko was just looking and generally asked the obvious question. Instantly, in a reply of the previous conversation, her pale face lights up with a violent blush. Oh, you've been running around like a little girl the whole time we've been here, haven't you? In 
that case, you want to just skip it and leave? Yes, that's the side then where you're, you're so easy to understand. Getting up off the branch, I take Yumiko by the hand and pull her to her feet. Let's get the grand finale then. <laughs> that's right. The miracle round. Before long, the two of us have climbed onto the ride Yumiko had her eye on. The park's shutting down for the night very soon. There aren't any visitors to be seen. But nonetheless, the girl looks around the area nervously, self-conscious despite the complete lack of spectators. What's the problem? Nobody's around. Might as well throw your pride to the wind and work the rest of childhood. <laughs> Yumiko protests the miracle round. She creaks to life and begins to spin. A vast array of cheap looking electric decorations and lights begin to blink cheerfully on and off in an upbeat tune that feels vaguely familiar plays from the speakers overhead. <laughs> Halfway through the sentence, Yumiko falters. The carousel horse she slowly rises and falls in Nifa's the scene before our eyes transforms again and again. A brilliant green gradient fade into a sky of impossible indigo blue, forming an artificial stage in the midst of the darkness. White, white lights out of them merge into one continuous line illuminating the spectacle. Soothing, strangely nostalgic sound and lights washing over us, the tone of Yumiko's face gradually begins to change. The crown, I can hear that girl he faintly, hear the girl faintly breathe in. And then, in a voice just barely audible over the garish music, she continues. Has anyone. Okay, another question for the comments. Has anyone ever written a horse before? Like I have once or twice. I'm just asking out of curiosity. Every time we move up and down the mill, the mill fixtures supporting our horse creak audibly. With every clunky and repetition. Fishing Yumiko's body shakes a little in my arms. It's not just because the horse is worn out. Yumiko shared her memories of those early days with me before. How at first she grew up assuming herself to be a normal child. How she slowly came to realize she was different. The beginning of her isolation.海の方にある遊園地や浜辺にお父さんやお母さんと一緒にみんな出かけていく。自分だけ一人で家の庭で土の上に絵を描いている。お母さんは病院にいる。お父さんは遠いところにいる。おじいちゃんのおばあちゃ
Okay. I'm gonna get aggressively more happy as this goes on. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, stars rotate before our eyes. The light merges together into one long, multi-colored stripe, dancing up and down, left and right. Red and white, yellow and blue extend all around us, spinning in time to cheerfully simple music. I never tell lies, did you know that by now? Ridiculous slander. Miko hesitates, choosing her next words carefully. I know which is what's coming next. It's nothing I want to hear. You're a phrase we tried to make it. We tried to make that move. Tip of her tongue so many times these last few months. The miserable apology that finally spills out of Yumiko's mouth is quite a frail thing, but still enough to pierce me to the core. Here we go. Calling her by her name. I stroke her cheek with my one hand. As if her pain wasn't enough, she wants to take on the darkness inside me. She's trying to load down her slender body with a weight it can't possibly bear. And this from a girl too weak even to support herself. I have something I wanted to say to you as well, Yumiko. Because the arm I wrapped around me, Yumiko, closer to me. Pressing my body against firmly, her body firmly to mine, I speak the words clearly into her ear. I'm really glad you were born. Thank you. I never had anyone care about me this much. Everything I did before I met you felt hollow. I always ended up alone. My master gone, I didn't. Why I was even bothering to keep on breathing. Taking on work to work for my country, I try to find the meaning of the words she left me at the end. They're all I had left. So I haven't unraveled the mist that mystery, but now that I'm with you go, I think I'm beginning to glimpse some small fragment of the answer. At the very least, your birth had meaning for me, so let me say this one more time. Don't apologize, I'm grateful to you. I embrace her even more strongly than before. Both the swaying carousel horse and Yumiko's body begins to tremble once again. A warm drop of water falls on the hand I wrapped around her, then another pretending not to notice, I gently stroke her hair. <laughs> Come on, I have to get to the next part now because of the time. God damn it. Well, on to the next part, shall we?